All right, everybody, now for some footy. Real FBI testing I'm going to give you. I'm that guy there. I suggest you pick this up. It's uh, very important stuff. It'll help you out. And, uh, guys, we're going to be talking about the 40. But, you know, let's start the video with me shooting an MP5 40, hidden video I got. So I thought that might be a nice way to start. Not only am I going to be giving you this data, which people have on the t downloaded 10 millimeter, which became the 40. Um, so I refilmed it. And I just filmed the 10 millimeter vid. I might put that one first because it's important, but I'm going to give you real data from FBI testing over the years and then some data from manufacturers and whatnot. So a little history lesson for you. 10 millimeter was being engineered around the early 80s, came out in 83. Uh, FBI, after Miami-Dade shooting at 86, starts doing wound ballistics workshops. And uh, in 1989, after testing uh, one of the uh, head guys, Colt Delta 10 millimeters, in 1989, they adopted 10 millimeter. 40 Smith & Wesson came out from Smith & Wesson and Pistol from Smith & Wesson and uh, Glock 22, Glock 23s came out from Glock in 1990. Um, so 40 gets a lot of very unfounded bad reputation. We're going to look at the 10 millimeter um, here. You can look at the data because these loads at those velocities uh, and these are this is important data to have how it did overall in all eight events, five shot through each of eight events back then before they went to six to show you how basically 40 would have done through all their tests. Then I'll give you the bear gel and heavy clothing tests that the FBI did over the years because FBI dropped 10 millimeter and went to 40 Smith and Wesson uh, in 1997 from the data I've been able to gather. Of course, the rest of the world in the 90s uh, when the 40 came out, everyone was jumping on the bad wagon. Nowadays, it gets a bad rep from even uh, veteran law enforcement officers and everyone else because, well, it was barrel swap pistols. They were using fucking Glocks. They were all just a barrel swap, and they were not engineered for 40. Or they were Beretta 92s, barrel swap turned into 96s that were not engineered for 40. So in a lightweight Glock, and a Glock 23 was the first pistol I bought many years ago, many, many moons ago, but basically, um, basically they're heavy recoiling because they weren't engineered for 40. The slides were not heavy enough for 40, um, etc. So if you shot 40 in a pistol that was engineered for it, like HK USP or SIG P229, suddenly 40 is pretty awesome. And it still is. And bullet tech that's getting made nine millimeter better, better. Well, guess what? HSTs exist in 40 too. And a 40 HST does 1.65 times more tissue crush than a nine millimeter 124 plus P HST, which is probably the best load for civilians ever made in nine millimeter. Okay, and I've recently tested the standard pressure in my own ballistics test uh, versus the 124 punch, which is also amazing. So if you got the bestest loads like HST, Gold Dot, Punch, Hydroshock Deep, etc. in 9mm, probably doing okay. But for all those 9mm fanboys, oh, it's just as good as a 40. No, homie, it's not. You seemingly can't do... Uh, expansion and tissue crush numbers. You can't calculate volume of a cylinder. So... 10 mil downloaded rounds did very uh, good, which is really how 40s would do. So look at the downloaded 10 millimeter. We're doing 92.5. We're doing 95%. We're doing uh, in the downloaded 10 mil rounds. Okay. All meeting at least 12 inches of penetration, even through all the barriers. So this is, um, we're going to get, F FBI test data here. Let's go up to what the manufacturers were claiming uh, before we look at the FBI data. This is manufacturers claims 165 golden saber, bear gel 14 inches penetration 0 0.60 expansion. 180 grand golden saber. Good round. This is what they were claiming. 
I mean, 13 inches penetration, 0.68. But pay attention how many times the FBI tested it and the velocities. It shows you how dependent on expansion threshold and certain parameters are based on the jacket thickness and the skivs and everything else. It's very high-tech stuff and very dependent on the velocity when it hits. Uh, because you see the same loads, Hydroshock and Golden Saber tested multiple times and different dates, and some doing very well and some doing meh. And that's because, well, you know, velocity threshold. Does it get full expansion even when going through four layer heavy clothing or not? Let's start looking at the FBI data, starting with 155 grain, working our way up to 165 and 180. 155 grain gold dot fired from a SIG P229. And again, it's really awesome if you fire 40 in things like MNP 2.0s or P99s or um, VP40s with thicker, heavier slides than the VP9s, even though HK is getting out of the 40 business. Uh, I don't, I'm sure that will break by the time this airs, but nobody's said it so far. But HK, unfortunately, is getting out of the 40 business. Uh, so hopefully you grabbed one and picked up some mags before that happened. All right. So let's look. Good penetration, good expansion. All loads are going to have good penetration and pretty much good expansion. And 40 is not going to shrink, right? 40 is not going to shrink, even if it doesn't meet one and a half times expansion through heavy clothing. We see huge expansion there from the gold dot. And so real world, it's probably either going to be somewhere in between or it's going to be just like the clothes. That's what real bullet performance in real shootings. It's either just like the heavy clothing or four-layer denim testing, or it's somewhere between the bear gel and the clothing. Because we're heterogeneous, and skin is tough. It depends on the angle and which organs it goes through. Okay? That's why organic gel testing matters and not clear ballistics. Clear ballistics gives you way farther penetration than real organic gel or real world does. So that gold dot is kicking butt. And basically, if it's a 40 round... You're going to be okay. Even an XTP that is known for very moderate expansion, that's going to do pretty damn good. And that is would be one of my lower end picks, right? Because it's not that great on the expansion through the heavy clothing. Winchester Silver's tip 155. Are they loading it this hot still? That is from a 4.5 inch Glock 22. But at least here, we're getting great penetration, great expansion. That round still in big box stores, is it loaded nearly that hot, though? So that can totally change bullet performance. As you'll see once we get down to, like, the 165s and the white 80s. Sorry about the lighting. Hopefully that gets a little bit better. Nope, it's not going into you. So there it is. Okay, 155. Uh... High shock, not hydro shock. High shock, old cup and core stuff. Not bad, not great. Um, is that available in the train and defend now? Is that the same bullet? Maybe not. No, maybe not at that weight. I think it's 180. Okay, so Federal Hydro Shock 155. We're doing good penetration, moderate expansion. Let's go to the 165 grain gold dot. From a P229. Awesome expansion bear. Meeting 1.5 time expansion clothes. Very good penetration. And so if you get either this result or you get in between the two results, which is what it's going to be one way or the other, depending on the heterogeneous space pockets in our bodies and different organs, different tissues, different densities, that's pretty much what you're going to get real world, which is pretty damn good with that 165 grain. Uh, gold dot. Hydroshock. Wow. Tactical Hydroshock doing really, really good when it was tested in 1997. Uh, now, are Tactical Hydroshocks different than Hydroshocks? They're just 20 round versus 50 round boxes. I don't know if someone nowadays knows what was going on in the 90s. At Federal, I do have contacts at Federal. They have sent me some ammo, but I've uh, just recently. Just recently this happened, but I've praised their ammo uh, before. Unfortunately, no expansion numbers given there. What do we got here? Remington 165. Doesn't say Golden Saber, so I don't know what bullet they were making back then. I don't think they do now in 165, but certainly that didn't suck. Even with 
old tech if that was old cup and core cheaper bullets hydroshock tested in 94 look at the velocity though way lower velocity is that below full expansion threshold that is below full expansion threshold through clothes heavy clothing heavy clothing matters organic gel matters Clear ballistics doesn't really matter, though I'll give you data at the end if this isn't too long. 165 grain golden saber. Okay. So th bullets are velocity based. So you see different performance. Same golden saber, but look, way hotter batch. Tested in 94. And then boom, I get what is really ideal. You know, FBI gives 14 to 16 the most points, inches of penetration. And they give the most points to over one and a half times expansion. Uh, but then you got to deal with drag, right? But that is very good if you got that all the time. But we're seeing three different lots of Golden Saber basically at different velocities if you went back through this data and you're getting different performance. So that's a little bit scary. So you do want manufacturers that are a little uh, better with their tolerances, making sure the right amount of powder is put in. And not as big of an extreme deviation from lot to lot. Ranger Talons. Huge expansion. Huge expansion. Was it measured at the bullet tip or down at the base of the talons? We've talked about that in other videos, though. 180 grain gold dot in 97. From a 229. Good velocity. 982 from that barrel length. That is just about perfect. If you want deep penetration and good expansion, uh, looks like that 180 grain gold, gold dot is the way to go, or HSTs, right? Well, they weren't invented yet. We'll get to some HST data later. And in my 40s, maybe you're loaded with some HST or some gold dots, right? Golden Saber. And this one did good even, this 180 grain at 931 feet per second. Guys, I wish the lighting I could do something about. It's just not doing it for this video. All right, 180 grain golden saber. Very, very good. Okay. But again, that seems to be... And here, 180 tested in 93. 945 feet per second. And yet, slightly higher velocity and yet... Almost no expansion, just a little bullet def deformation through the heavy clothing this time. So in general, I would say Golden Saber is not a bad round, but boy, it does seem a little bit variable lot to lot. This should be the hottest. USP barrel is longer, four and a quarter, and it's polygonal, and usually HK barrels are fast. Uh, but that's a slower velocity. That's under pow pow underpowered. And therefore, they did not, they got good expansion in bear gel. But if it's not at the high velocity, you're seeing that if it's not in the right velocity threshold, you're not getting through heavy clothing. Ballistic testers, no matter what medium you're using, you need to be putting it through four layer denim or at least like two layer denim, two layer, layer t shirt, something like that. In my 38 nine millimeter test I've done, I did it with four layer denim. And in my 357 Magnum, I put it through six layer, four layer denim, followed by two layer t shirt when I tested the new HST and six other 357 Magnum rounds. But I've become a big fan of 40 again. And unfortunately, Lucky Gunner, Clear Ballistics, whatnot, made everyone go, oh, nine millimeters just as good, or it's even better, it penetrates further. Not when you test it in organic, Joe. So it has skewed everyone, everyone's perceptions. Like I said, I carry a 9 a lot. I carry a 9 when I work as an armed guard. I've also done firearms training through a SWAT school. Um, if you have very, very good rounds from long barrels and 9mm, you're, you're probably doing okay. And even in short barrels, if it's a HST or it's a punch, as I tested from a 3.2 inch uh, micro, you're doing okay. XTP, only 0.55 expansion. So, I mean, if you needed something that could work on both two-legged and four-legged, maybe an XTP is okay, though. I'd probably just pick a gold dot. Hydra Shock. And by the way, 40 uh, flat point, which all basically 40 ball is really not ball. FMJ, it's FMJ flat point. Penetrates super, super, super far in organic gel or any medium, and therefore would also be very good for animal defense. Even basic target 
plinking full metal jacket slash flat point with that flat met, met plate in 40 will do very, very, very good versus animals. And uh, 40 is also the best round versus vehicles. It's a bigger, heavier bullet going through windshields, even than 357 SIG, you guys, which will nosedive in on itself. A 40 will usually still expand out a bit, and it's going a big honk, good momentum through. 40 is the best if you're a state trooper or you're dealing with auto, uh, cars. I have many videos on 40 and uh, why cops should go back to 40. Let's look at critical duty. 1010, is it getting that real world from real testers? I don't know. Heavy clothing, 14 and a half, but only 0.54 expansion. Again, we're starting diameter at 0 0.40. We want to meet 1.5 times to 0 0.60. So that's not the biggest wound from a 40 year going to get. In fact, that does less tissue crush when you calculate their real, their testing, their data than the 135 plus P. So yeah, not if you're comparing those rounds, but if you compare HSTs or gold dots, things start to change. Let's look up at better performance from a Winchester T-Series. Uh, bear gels on the left, heavy clothing on the right, 12 inches, 76 expansion. Bonded, 13.9, less expansion, so more penetration, 0.689 with the bonded. And uh, 160, let's go to 165. 14.2, But the talons, are they measuring at the front or are they measuring down by the talons, which gives you a false expansion ratio, which would give you a false tissue crush value, uh, adjusted volume, uh, volume of the cylinder, how much tissue is destroyed, which is very, very important because outside the central nervous system shot, blood loss is what makes bad guys woozy, kneel down, fall down, or go fibs I've been shot and stop their deadly attack. Excuse me. Let's look at this data here. Comparing to the 124 plus P's, which a great round. Again, a great round used by NYPD and tons of law enforcement agencies. So not a big difference at the 165, but go down to the 180 gold dot. 0 0.709 expansion with almost as far penetration, and you're going to get a bigger volume of destroyed tissue, faster blood loss. I believe it's going by memory 1.3 times more in the 40. So round to round comparison, 1.3 times. But when you go to the big, huge awesomeness of HSTs, and trust me, I got pistols loaded with 124 plus P HST. It is my chosen load Though that punch was super uh, impressive. So from a real short barrel, I'm really impressed by punch uh, as well. A little higher velocity, a little softer lead. But 13 inches, 0 0.61 expansion. That's awesome. 165 HST, 12 and a half, 0 0.70 expansion. Let's look at the 180 HST. 12 and a half, but 0 0.80 expansion. Well, that's only a little difference, you say. Because you're looking, or in the ER, or the doctor couldn't tell the difference. Because you're looking at the difference between a pinky and like a middle finger and a 40 and a thumb and a 45 in someone's big, fat-ass American body, okay? Compared to the body, put the, put the fingers on your body and go, oh yeah, right there, I couldn't tell the difference. But it's volume of a cylinder through the entire bullet path. So if it's this, it's through the entire 13, 14, 15 inches of penetration versus this. So that's why 40 doesn't suck and those 9mm fanboys are wrong. Let's hear Paul Harrell has to say when he tested through a, thigh, a special meat target going through an arm first. And he got the 8 inches penetration exactly right on the 115 as to real organic testing at the time and real autopsy of Platt, by the way, in the Miami-Dade shooting. So maybe Paul Harrell knows what he's talking about. Let's see 9 verse 40. failed to do so in any meaningful way. The critical duty rounds were absolutely more effective in terms of penetration, but their expansion and their damage to the tissue just wasn't all that impressive. Again, not nearly as much as the 40. So the idea that there's been great strides forward in bullet technology, allowing the 9 to be more effective today than it once was, yes, that seems to be true if you buy the right kind of ammunition. 
But as far as the 9 millimeter being of equal power to the 40 and really have equal stopping power, by today's presentation, I would have to say no, it does not. So, so I highly suggest everyone watch that video. Put, we'll put some things in perspective for you, and maybe it'll change over to 40 carry, or at least in winter time, change over to 40 carry. Again, much better dealing with vehicles, which most law enforcement shootings, a huge percentage has to deal with, um, and more um, better for animal defense, right? So 40 isn't short and weak at all. 40 is amazing, okay? As long as you're a good shooter with good recoil control, you've worked a day in your life or actually done some push-ups, maybe it's because of the lightweight Glocks and cars and stuff or durability-wise when 96s were beating themselves up. Now, 96A1 or 90-2 was a little more a little more engineered for it, so who knows on them. But put a 40 in any HK... Or even a Glock Gen 5, finally engineered for the Brazilian police, Glock Gen 5 40s don't fit the same holsters because it's a heavier and thicker slide, two and a half ounces heavier approximately. Just like the VP40 is a heavier and thicker slide than the VP9. I sent Gunsam a bunch of old LE ammo to test. And he's done three videos. He's got enough for one more. Hopefully he does one more in the future, some oddball stuff. And every round other than UMC, every 40 round tested has been amazing. Check out the three part so far series Make 40 Great Again. All the ammo I tested is Gun Sam. And well, that's clear ballistics. But no, I say look at his real world, four layer denim, medium density fiberboard, three inches in. He'll still get farther penetration and less expansion, but I can put them in a ratio and they totally correspond very closely to the tissue crush value volume of a cylinder like the FBI was doing. That's what all these numbers here that's tissue crush. How much tissue, how much blood loss it causes if it doesn't, you know, hit the central nervous system. And even a bigger bullet's more likely to hit like a, an artery or an aorta. A bigger expanded bullet is more likely to hit something vital. Um, and having said that, there's this thing called BP shock. When you lose so much blood, you kneel down or bad guy falls down on the ground. We see all these multiple 9mm hits. Even in the Miami-Dade, Platt got shot 12 times with 9mm and 38. We see many, many shootings where guys are getting shot in the double digits. 10, 11, 20, 19 times, 16 times, 13 times, right? If it was a 40, 45, a good bullet, bigger diameter, I think you would get less reanimation, which is a major problem on all this uh, shooting data we see. I, I would think... Law enforcement could eventually, in pistols engineered for it, go back to 40. Just from a PR standpoint, if I only have to shoot someone four to nine times, then all the officers surrounding shooting them 17 to 30 times, um, doesn't that not get on the news? Because nine doesn't sound nearly as exciting as, oh, you shot them 14 times, right? So let's get in the single digits, which I believe you would get. And you they wouldn't reanimate because you would lose so much blood loss. Right now, they're kind of just going down. And then they regain a little bit of blood pressure. And then they stand back up and continue their deadly attacks uh, again. So do read some studies on BP shock. And that's, you know, my theory. And I'm sticking to it. Here's some clear ballistics from Lucky Gunner. Again, you have to minus about, you know, three to six and a half inches of penetration from these numbers. But if you look at which one's got deeper penetration and good expansion, if even cheaper stuff, if you roll through all the 40s, a whole lot of rounds are on the deeper end of the penetration, which in clear ballistics absolutely matters. And they're still getting very, very good expansion but my video gives you the fbi data to compare those two and that was from a uh, glock 27 3.42 or whatever barrel here's an mp 9c first gen was only 3.5 inch barrel ammo to go which ones get in the deeper ranges or halfway to deeper you know ranges of penetration with a lot of expansion again momentum matters after going through ribs or sternum or, you know, through a bunch of barriers and junk and meth houses and whatever, like law enforcement has to deal with. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. 40 is friggin' awesome. Anyone that tells you it sucks can't shoot with shit. They have poor recoil control. Or they were 
their ideas were because they used to be issued a, a Glock in 40 that was just a barrel swap. Please get this. It's going to help you out and hopefully avoid having to actually ever fire. And at least you can say that I try to de-escalate and kept awareness up and things I teach you. Thank you.